What was your cross examination like in court? What was horrific? Yeah. But I, I can't. I have to say, I can't recall much of it. My husband recalls all of it, um, and it affected him really bad because they chucked. A, they had a bundle of dockets about the size of a Rubik's cube, and he chucked the barrister chucked them at me, and the judge stopped the cross examination in the end. Yeah, because he got really aggressive and was saying, you know exactly what you've done. Look at these. And he just chucked in. I said, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. Can you see what this is? I said, yes, it's a pension docket. Yes, and you looked at that and you took that money. I said, I haven't taken any money. You know, and he was going on and on and on and on to the point where he threw the, the dockets and then the judge stepped in and said, that's enough. If you've got no further questions, then... We'll hold this now. So, Nikki, these dockets that they didn't have were never shown to you or your lawyer. They were thrown at you in court. In, a, that, in a, a plastic bag. I've never heard anything like it. In a zippy plastic bag in temper. Yeah, they're all banded so, up. You couldn't see anything. Disclosure. As it was should have been. Well, well, that was your disclosure. It was thrown at you in court. In a plastic bag. In a plastic bag. Meant I mean, it, to I'm me. laughing at it because it's laughable. It, it, tell us a little bit about your history because you, you ended up running a post office. But what happened before that? Um, my history, I um, did quite well at school. I went on to university um, to become a teacher, um, which I did for nearly six years um, but I just decided I wanted to change and the thought of having a business of my own um, was the, the bigger appeal I think mm -hmm. um, I wanted something that was long-term um, permanent steady safe um, and I felt the post office network was a good investment at the time um so you know i saw a job locally advertised because we, because we'd um just moved to the area and i saw a job advertised and i and i quite fancied it so which was at brimscombe post office as an employee and i thought well that would be nice to learn the ropes um uh, sort of stress-free if you like um, and that was the, in the days where everything was manually done the computer system wasn't thought about then um, so yeah that's that's how I became involved in the post office was I took the job I went for a job interview for Brimscombe post office and was taken on as a counter assistant um, and then after several years I, I can't be exact you know it's probably about three years she decided she would sell the business um, so it takes us to when about 1990 something oh now you're asking yeah um let's think when i'm try trying to get to the point yeah it would have been sort of 1995 yeah. i would imagine something around there yeah a bit later actually about 96 97 um and the own um, the people who had bought business off of her um was the husband and wife team which made me surplus to requirements yeah. um but during the time working for, for them for my boss that was it was soon discovered that the local it within the local area because we had a lot of little villages in Gloucestershire still do. Um, Gloucestershire's sort of made up of, of many tiny little villages with lots of little sub post offices. None, none of the sub postmasters could go ever go on holiday because there was no one to ever cover for their yeah. post office. And the post office, it wasn't a service, the post office, because it was a franchise. They didn't offer any support where that was concerned either. So I thought, well, that could be a niche market for me to go into um, because I'd spoke to many of them on the phone, you know, during my time with the post office. So a lot of them actually got to know me anyway. And so I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to start up doing relief work, see how much demand there is and take it from there, um, which is what I did. Um, and that's, I, I covered many post offices, Painswick, 
Minchinhampton, Amberley, Nailsworth, Stonehouse, all over Gloucestershire, you know, and I was busy a lot. And then I got called to Chalford Hill um, and it was because the sub postmistress was poorly um, and, and quite elderly um, and wasn't coping very well. And she said, would I be prepared to um, cover for a while um, until she recovered? Um, so that's what I did. Um, but then it turned out that she was terminally ill. Mm. Um, and so I landed up staying there. It, it was sort of going to two months. And I said, well, I can't be self-employed on this basis. I'm here too much. You know, I, I need to be moving around to different offices. And that's when a proposal come to me. They said, well, um, you, you can stay here if, if you want and we'll take you on. Um, but the shop would be yours to do as you wish with. Um, but that would be reflected in the salary. Mm. Um, so I went home, had to think about it and thought, well, why not? You know, I could refit the shop out. I had a little bit of savings, nothing exciting, but enough um, to get the shop refitted. I did a lot of um, sale or return greeting cards, got in touch with loads of different companies who would provide me with stock and fill the shop up and things. So that was good. And then I come to an agreement with the sub postmistress that I would take, I think it was £200 a week in salary full time. So she had a portion of the, obviously, the post office salary yeah. and then give me a salary out of that. And so she was earning, I was earning and everyone was happy. Um, and then she, uh, unfortunately, she passed away. Um, and so her husband, because he didn't want to lose the post office within the village, um, asked if I would be prepared to carry it on. Um, he'd never worked in a post office, had nothing to do with it or whatever. Um, so I agreed. Um, so then that's how it was all set up. Her husband would then become the, the official sub postmaster even though he'd never worked in a post office, he wouldn't, you know, he just didn't know anything about it um, at all. Um, but it did keep the post office within the village and no change to the customers. Um, and so that's how it carried on. And I took a part timer on as well um, to help me. Um, and we had a steady salary from the shop. Um, which was selling greeting cards, um, confectionery, stationery, um, all the sort of postage packaging, you know, all the boxes and jiffy bags and all the all stationery of any kind, really. If I could um, just if I could just cut in, I'm, I suppose the story you're telling, in fact, emphasizes how you had a huge network of trust around you because you were working in other people's post offices. Yeah. You were being offered to run the post office, even though you weren't the sub, sub postmaster. And and a key holder, because obviously these people yeah. were leaving yeah. the properties yeah. um, and sometimes their homes that were connected to it, yes. going on holiday. Um, yes. And I've done that for several years. By the time um, any of the horizon issues affected me, I'd been with them nearly 10 years by then. And, so and, I and if anybody needed to establish your good, your bona fides, as it were, your good faith. It, it was uh, available you, to everyone. You yeah. had that I'd established in, reputation, really, in the whole Yeah, neighborhood. I'd been in the, that's right. I'd been in that, you know, within a, I would say, a 15 mile vicinity of, of Gloucestershire, but within that section, yeah. the last 10 years. And I'd got to know every, you know, a lot of people. And it was a lot of word on mouth. I didn't ever advertise. I know, sure. um, what I was doing it was just purely oh could you cover this day could, could you book me in for this day and you know that's how it went on I was I was really busy and the know, other side of it is the investment of time and effort in building yeah. a business yeah because I had to, um the shop had been run down where mm. it had been previously neglected mm. is probably the wrong word but um yeah due to ill health and things it had been left mm sort of diminish really it was damp it was old it was dirty there wasn't 
um, much on, left on the shelves or in the stock room come to that matter, you know. It did mm. really need a good revamp. So I had it all refitted. Well, my husband did a lot of the work, um, mm. building new shelves, brand new carpets throughout and a new um, till and, and new At some stock stage, office. you took over the whole contract. You took over the supper. The, the shop, uh, no, uh, no. And this is the odd thing is I was never... The sub postmaster. Right. The sub postmaster remained with the husband, who who at the time, like I said, he he was a civil servant. Well, he'd retired. He was in his seventies then, um, and that had no intentions of learning how to do the post office whatsoever. But he wanted to keep it within the village um, where his family lived, um, and he was very well known, extremely well known. Um, but as soon as the post office got involved, they told him what to do or else, and he done it um, yeah. to protect himself. But so, he probably had to. Let's just go backwards yes, a little bit, um, Nikki. Um, when did Horizon come on the scene from your perspective? In Well, in 1999, I was told that I would be one of the first um, offices to roll it out. And that um, was when you were at... Um, Chalford Hill. Yeah, so this is the last post office you've been talking about. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, Chalford Hill, yeah. And in 2000, it, beginning of 2000, it was installed in my office. And it, the initial rollout, I think it went to a couple of hundred post offices only, and then it was going to have a further rollout thereafter. Why you? Think, why you? Why? Yeah. I don't know. They they just right. decided randomly. I, well, okay. I don't know whether there was a method in their madness. I don't know. Okay. Um, but they selected a certain amount of post offices, and I was one of them. Sure. Um, which I was happy with. You know, I was. I I did feel the business needed to be updated. Um, so so yeah, I I was more than happy to be one of the first or one of the last, either and or. Then you but, got, you know, and then you got trained. Yeah, how, how long? No, that, <laughs> no, no, that, that's in the ideal world. We would have yeah. thought that would be the, the next step of progression, but no, it wasn't. No, it, it, um, the, all the equipment turned up and I had a live date given to me. Um, and on that day, the engineers coming about, I think it was about half seven in the morning before the business opened, um, and set all the equipment up. The business remained open, and the trainer was there with me for that morning. And that that was the training. We had to keep the business running, so we had customers coming in and out all the time. Um, so so I was sort of half doing it manually and half electronically because I was still trying to learn how to use the equipment. And I wasn't keeping up. Obviously, the queues were backing up because I, I was actually meant to be shown what to do. Um, so I was sort of the things I could do manually and say, well, I'll come back to that. I'll put those transactions on when I'm ready. Um, I did. Um, and by one o'clock, they'd gone. And so and I was left. The engineer and, and the yeah, train. yeah, yeah. And I was left with this massive, great big um user manual <laughs> and they yeah and and they basically said you know that refer to that everything you need to know if you get stuck everything you need to know is in there how many pages of manual do you think there were oh my word seven eight hundred you know it was a big clip folder yeah there was plenty there I mean, when i was meant to have time to read it i don't Why? know but um it, it they did leave me a manual i have to admit um and then of course i had to show marley my part-timer i had to show her how to do it because she had no training at all so she was basically learning from somebody who didn't know themselves how to use it properly um well, but I, I, you this, know. I mean, how on earth could this be deemed to be appropriate? You, you well, I, I believe, I, I mean, it, it's only guessing, but I do believe years down the line, some sub postmasters, and I mean, we're talking five, six years down the line, 
did actually go and have a proper training. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't available to me. And um, if you notice in Judge Fraser's um, final judgment, he's broke down each year how safe the equipment was. And I think the beginning he described as, as diabolical, you know, it was the worst of the worst because it not only was it the maximum unreliable, it was also people didn't have a clue how to use it either. No. So the combination was never pretty. It was never going to um, work. So you set but, off on that kind of first day and how, how does it go with balancing and you know, how did you feel after the first week? or write about it or were you yeah yeah and I mean I did ring the helpline an awful lot and I did discover that most of them had no idea how to use it either um, right. because they basically said you know it's trial and error and then I was told that due to my experience I'm looking at it in a negative approach <laughs> I need to embrace the computer system because I'm you know I'm, I'm being very negative about it and I'm like well I'm not being negative I just don't know how to use it you know I don't know what I'm doing and I said oh well you know you haven't given it a chance you need to you know the rollout is is here for that reason I'm how like, was well, your assistant finding it was, was she struggling too presumably? yeah she yeah. she didn't uh, you know she didn't work on her own at all um for the first two months with it you know so she was working alongside me although so I had to pay her to come in to work with me um but you know her her I have to say her training wasn't adequate either because she yeah. she How had to you? learn from me yeah quite. um you know which it wasn't but we were trying to make the best of a, a bad situation and plus the business has to go on you know the the business has to be open 24 7 all day every day um whether you like it or not so you what know about I had the to... person who was in charge of you not not the man who not the said postmaster but the person from the post office in charge of you did he or she appreciate there were problems or were you not given any nothing no. nothing no no, I, cause, because I used to have to ring the helpline and the helpline would get hold of your area manager to flag up problems if if you hadn't. But never once did he turn up or ask never. how I was getting on. Never. No, not even towards the end. I've never met the chap. Who was Who he? It was. I don't know. I can't remember his name now. Um, but I'm sure we could find out. Um, but... Yeah, and no. He I've, must I've have been met. hearing, presumably, Nikki, from the helpline that you were struggling, or perhaps there wasn't even that communication. Oh, oh, I don't know. Um, I, I would, I would say not, right. because nobody knew what they were doing. That, that. Looking back now, I was ringing a helpline that had probably never seen the computer system before in their lives. You know, the helpline. I hope they had a manual. Well, exactly. And I and basically said, oh, well, we've got the same book as you've got, you know, um, <laughs> and without the equipment in front of them, it was just pointless ringing them. Pointless. But although I'm, I did. I'm laughing, not because I'm, you know, feeling unsympathetic, Nikki. It's because it's just it's just amazing. It's, it's a, we yeah. laugh at so much of these problems that we're, I we're think kind of. You've got to. Yeah. I think, do you think. Do you think the helpline people were at Fujitsu or were they at the post office, do you think? Oh, they were the post office. They were the same helpline as we had the week before the computer uh -huh. system started. So, yeah, no, they, they knew it was, well, we don't even know, but we assume they knew which offices were going live that week. Mm. Um, but I had no access to Fujitsu engineers or anything like that whatsoever. Mm. Um, not that I would have thought of contacting them anyway, I don't think. Because, you know, by the time I started getting problems with the system, knowingly, um, obviously there was problems with it from day dot. But when they were identified to me, um, I'd been reporting week on week problems and nothing was being done. It was just, well, this is the whole point of the rollout so we can see how the system's working, identify the problems and solve them. 
And from, the, from the people you were talking to at the helpline, did you get the impression from them that they had a string of people ringing up or did you get the impression where they telling you you're the only person phoning up? No, they, they would never say it. They wouldn't reveal anything like that. They wouldn't, right. No, no, you, I would have no idea. Um, and, and that, you know, that would be whenever, if, you, if it ever you ran, unless it was something like um, power outage and things like that, that they knew about, then they'd say, yes, we've already been told there's a problem. Um, and yes, it'll be back up shortly or whatever. Um, but generally, you didn't talk about other post offices to them or the other way around. Okay. So, um, but I was, you know, I rang them, I think it worked out between eight and 10 times leading up to my audit every single week. And every single week I was told the same thing. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll correct itself. You know, there's nothing we can do from our end, just show the figures as they are. Um, and, and so I only did what I thought I was told to do. So what was the problem that you encountered when you knew, you know, you, you, you could say, this is, this is what, what I don't understand, you know, what, what went well, wrong? It's, it's quite complicated if you didn't work in a post office, but I'll try and explain it as simple as I can. With um, when somebody come in for pensions and allowances, whether it be child benefit, um, state pension, uh, disability allowance everyone used, years ago used to get given a book that mm. had two pension dockets in perforated and you got one of those dockets per week for your entitlement now some customers would save up five weeks at a time in cash all five of them some would get it weekly because they needed it or, or whatever you know so there's different patterns to how people would get their mm. pensions or their allowances um, child benefits some were monthly some were weekly um, and we would process anything up to 800 of these dockets a week um, and, you know they were just little squares of sort of paper and then what would happen is is in the, the old way we would have to manually add them up and then declare how many how much money we have paid out in a week yeah. on the balance sheet yeah. and then the cash coming in would balance against how much we were paying out yeah. so by the time we took all the capital when we balanced of the stock everything like this we would take all our payments all the money we paid out whether it be well most of it would be benefits and things like that and gyros um and then all the money we've received in and then the two should balance and then when horizon came we used to have to scan the dockets rather than with our massive loud stamps we used to use we used to scan it and then the screen would tell you how much to pay out and then you would keep the docket as your paper trail if you like and then pay the money the screen would tell you how much money to pay out um whether it be you know and then you would write in one week two week whatever people are claiming and then at the end of the week when you came to balance, the computer system obviously would um, calculate everything on a weekly basis. And the weekly totals weren't the same as the daily ones. That's how I knew. The weekly totals, I've got to try and remember this now, the weekly totals were saying that I was paying out more than what I was. So you're meaning that if you added up the seven days, you would get a different yeah. amount. Is that what you yes. mean? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so by the time the auditors got there, they were saying, well, where's the surplus money? And I'm like, what, what surplus money? And they said, well, your weekly totals are saying that you've paid out this, but you haven't. But so your where's daily the totals were right. Were right. Yes, and the cash was right, the daily totals. But because we sent we send the paper dockets off to Ireland, once they're gone, they're gone. Oh, you can't retain them. No, no. So your daily paperwork is gone. Well, how often are you sending your daily paperwork off? The daily. Week? Daily. Yes. So you've got yes. no physical 
thing no. to look at. Wow. No, no. And I asked for them and I wasn't allowed to have them. You know, because I said until I know the dailies. And, and luckily I made a mental note. But as soon as the first balance didn't balance, I thought, I can't understand what's wrong here. The, the pensions are right. Everything was right. The cash was right. The pensions were right. Everything. And yet the weekly totals was wrong. And I yeah. thought, this is just mad. I, ca I cannot work out why the weekly total is different from the daily total. There is no common sense reason for it. So, of course, I was ringing the helpline. I said, look, this is what's happening. Well, no, it can't be. I said, well, <laughs> it is. I said, you know, at the moment it's saying that I'm £4,000 short. I said, but I'm not. The daily allowance is, because I manually wrote them down myself, I said, if Marlene's added them up or I've added them up, we wrote them down our, our manual and we kept all the calculator printout things of each one manually. And so we could compare because I knew some wasn't right there. Did you start to do that because of it, Nikki? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very that sensible. Was our old, well, that yeah. was our old method, you see. Yeah. And I thought, well, well, let's, that worked. Yeah. So if I do that and then I've got some to compare it with. So week two... The four thousand pound weekly deficit become an eight thousand pound, and it literally doubled to the penny. Doubled. Yes. Each time. It wasn't the same amount yes. each week. It doubled. It doubled whatever the previous week was. It's kind of exponential rise. <laughs> yes. So. It's going to I'm get to the moon in in about a month, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, every, all the money in the world is going to be owed by your post office. Yeah, within four weeks, <laughs> I was getting, you know, I was like, the auditors turn up and accuse me of, you know, stealing 30-odd thousand pounds. Well, good job they turned up weeks. then, because you'd be as rich as Dubai after <laughs> Well, <six> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I said, well, no, you, you know, and I could see what was happening, but I had no means of getting my point across if that makes any well, sense they weren't listening it sounds to me more they didn't want to listen yeah they did to me they didn't want to listen because you'd retained you know? your paperwork had you your your, your uh, calculations all I, could, all I was allowed to to do was keep my calculations yeah yeah and you um, kept but them. obviously the, the dockets had to be sent yes yeah and I kept Marley uh, you know I kept my part-timers calculations as well yeah um which was literally, you know, they said, oh, well, you could conjure them up from anywhere. You know, that means So they didn't, to did they look didn't at them? Didn't even really? look at it. No. Just weren't even going look to look at it. at it. No. Wow. No. As soon as the auditor came, it was one auditor, but there was three people um, and they introduced themselves as the audit team. So I automatically assumed it was three auditors. Um, so, uh, and uh, to be quite... Nikki, Nikki, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but... This all blew up within weeks of Horizon being launched with yes. you. Yes. How many weeks did you be? Were you running it before they all turned up? Uh, Just a few. Yeah. Well. Well, I would say eight. Right. In total. Okay. I understand that. Yeah. And were you the, um, one of the first ones in the country? Yeah. Did you say? Yes. So, right. Yeah. And there's no yeah. question about the fact these these sums are so magically doubling. Nobody's yes. thinking. A That's fraud, a, a fraud weird. which involves you just doubling up your stealing um, routine they, weekly. It doesn't bring a doesn't sound alarm bells to them. There was no scope for alarm bells. Mm. What your audit is on the day, mm. they will only talk about the day. Mm. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday, what happened last week, the week before. They're not interested. It's amazing. They're here to do a random audit that and to be honest I welcomed it I went you know I turned up at work and and it, to me it was a normal day um with these three people waiting outside and let them in obviously made coffee and I thought oh thank god yeah you thought you know? they were going to come and help you sort I, it well, out I, I gen yeah I genuinely thought yeah. they was connected with the helpline and I thought oh well, that's the you know the feed through yeah if you like yeah and I thought, oh, that, you know, that's fair enough. At least they're listened. At least something's going to be done today. Is you know, a, and... Could I just ask another question? You're sending these actual dockets off to Ireland. 
Yeah. Is that Northern Ireland or the Republic? Yes. Northern, Northern. Ireland. Yeah. And that's where some post office office is, is it? Where they save up or, these dockets? I, I, I don't know whether it's Department of Work and Pensions or the post office, because it was purely all the pensions, allowances and gyros. Everything to do with the Department of Work and Pensions got in a sealed white envelope and then it got manually collected by the postman, and then it, they all got sent to Ireland. And am I right, Every to, single am I right you never the saw land. them again? Nobody nobody no, ever saw them again? No. I had a bundle chucked at me at Crancourt. Ah. Somebody could get hold of them. Yeah. Well, he managed to. I yeah. didn't. Yeah. And my barrister didn't either. Yeah. We asked, you know, obviously we asked, and, yeah, and mm. we, nothing was forthcoming. Um, but that... That's further down the line. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So you've got these three people making themselves at home with a coffee and roaming around your shop. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. And the, the post office was sort of, I don't know how to describe it, really, almost like a little box, mm. a, a, a sealed container, if you like, because of security and whatnot. So the auditor was in there doing the business, doing the audit, which was absolutely fine. And the, the man who was with the auditor, he was sort of stood in the doorway chatting with the auditor and there was a lady who was out talking to me um, in the back sort of room where the stock is and at part of the shop. And it was just general, how are you, you know, what's happening and all the rest of it. For the first hour, it was a completely normal thing. I put the sign on the door to say the office is shut due to an audit, you know, which is normal. Um, I'd had several audits before in the last 10 years in because they always turn up randomly in different post offices. So you just, just don't know which is fine. Had you ever and had I, three people turn up before? Had, had you ever seen that before? Thinking about it now, no. No. But I'd had two. I'd yeah. had two audits, but not three, no. Um, God, yeah, that's irritating. No, I'd never thought of that <laughs> before. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so to me, it was a normal working day, the audit get done. And I said, oh, you know, to the to the woman, I, I said, you know, I'm having, do you know, I've I've had problems with, with the computer system. She said, no. I saw I have. I said, you know, I've rang the helpline. I said, I assume this is what today's about. And she said, no, 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 nothing like that. And And so then that was it. And then about an hour and a half later, the man came out with the woman then to me and said, um, do you realise you've got a shortage of around, around, I think it's £35,000? I said, well, I don't know whether you would class it as a shortage. I said, because it's been going on for the last four weeks. I've rang the helpline. Um and so I don't quite know what's going on. Oh, no, it's a shortage. It's definitely a shortage. That cash should be in there. The weekly report is telling us that you should have £35,000 cash there. I said, well, that's not strictly true. I said, because of the computer system. No, no. She said, I think you need to listen because I think you could be in serious trouble. She said... We are going to have to take you over to Stride Post Office and question you further because this shortage needs answers. And I, I said, right. I said, well, what happens with the post office? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, sh should I bring my part-timer to, to keep the business open? No, it will remain shut. And I said, well, I don't, I don't really understand what's happening. I said, I've, I've done absolutely nothing wrong. And she said, well, we'll need to establish that further down the line. She said, but at the moment, you've got, we've got some questions we'd like to ask you. And I said, oh, right, okay. I said, so do, shall I ring somebody do I bring a friend or what what and she said no she said we're just gonna ask you some questions that's all I said all right and then she said um but you'll be leaving your vehicle here 
She said, and you'll come in our car. I said, well, well why would I do that? I said, because as soon as it's over, I can come back. I'll need to come back here to open the post office. She said, I wouldn't worry about that for the moment. She said, you'll, come, you'll be coming in our car. We'll go over to Stroud, ask you a few questions, and that will be that. And I said, right, okay. I said, so shall I ring the owner and just let him know what's happening? And she said, yes, you can do. So I rang Mr. Breakwell, who owned the post office. I saw the auditors have come. I said, and they're talking about this shortage because I'd already told him that week on week that there was one. I said, but I've got to go over to Stride Post Office and answer a few questions. And he's still right, okay, let me know what's happening then. And and that was it. Um, and so that that was that was it. That was all that that was the end of that sort of section, if you like. So then we go off into the car, the auditor then goes off in his car. And I'm in the car with this lady and gentleman. We go over to Stride, march through the main post office, and I was let in a side door. And then we got into a room that had a, a almost like a big reinforced doors on, coded doors. Um, so you could only type in the code if you knew what the code was, which I didn't. So I had no means of getting in or out. And there was a recording um, sort of deck thing there as well um, with the old fashioned audio tapes set up there. And she said, right, she said, the lady, she said, right, you know, take a seat. She said, I hope you know how serious situation you are in. Have they spoken to you in the car on the journey? No. no, they didn't speak at all. Only general. Oh, what a pretty area! Oh, yeah, this is lovely. And you know, general observations. You know, it was oh, this is a lovely area. How long have you lived here, Nikki? You know, and stuff like that. You know, and and I I had no reason to to not trust their word, if you like. So I was there yaggering away. Oh, yeah, I've been here fifteen years now. You know, my husband's from this area. Well, when my husband at the time, I said, so you know, we've just sort of started up. We've just bought a. Oh, have you? I said, well, we've just bought a shared ownership home. We couldn't afford um, a house house of our own yet. I said, so you know, things are looking up. We we managed to do that and. She said, oh, yeah. She said, I did notice in the post office there was um, a postcard on the wall from Tunisia. She said, was that you? <laughs> I said, yeah. She said, oh, what, what you, you've been on holiday, have you? I said, well, two months ago. I said, but, you know, I like to send a postcard back to the customers because they'll all say, oh, where's Nikki? Where's Nikki? I said, so, all oh, right, OK. And then we got into this room and she said, oh, do you realise um, you're, you know, you're in a lot of trouble? I said, I said, but they didn't say no. anything about that until you arrive no. and they've got you nope. in a room. There's, there's yeah. no preparation of maybe you nope. need a solicitor. No. Um, no. And you know. I asked, as soon as she said that, I said, well, I need, can I have somebody with me? I don't like how I'm feeling now. No. And she said, no, no, no. She said, we haven't even asked anything yet. She said, so, no. She said, I've told you you're here to answer some questions and that's what we're going to do. She said, and it will be recorded. Um, and, and that's it. And I, I'm like, oh, okay. And then he, the, the man perked up. He said, do you, just so you know, he said, I am... Um, XCID. He well, said, you should know he, better then. And he said, and I do recognise liars very easily. Oh, Nikki. I'm like, what's that got to do with me? He said, well, I'm just warning you. I've seen it all before. So the quicker you stop wasting all our time, the better. You know, and I, I think, you know, I was 26 at the time. And, and, you know, I'd come from a sleepy little village in Wooden Under Edge. You know, this was just, oh, my God. And I, I, I'd i never even been in a police station yeah. before. I mean, our village didn't even have one. 
I mean, that's how sleepy we were. And I was like, I, I don't know where this is going, but I don't like it. No. Uh, you know, I said, this is, this is frightening. He said, you should be frightened. He said, you are in a lot of trouble. I said, I haven't done anything. He said, yes, you have. He said, you've um, taken this money and we want to know where it is. Is the tape recorder on at that point? Yeah, or, yeah. Uh... All this is being recorded. And I, I said, I haven't taken any money whatsoever. I've, I've never, ever taken a single pen. Well, yes, you have. Stop wasting our time. Um, I said, I'm not wasting your time. I, oh, well, well, maybe we paid for your holiday. Did you go on holiday courtesy of the post office? Did the post office pay for that? I said, no, the post office did not pay for that. I said, you can have all my bank statements, everything. I have not taken a single penny. I haven't got any money at all. I said, you know, we've, I said, my boss, I said, Brian Breakwell, I said, he has helped me with my shared ownership mortgage. I said, and in order to get a shared ownership property, they go through every single bit of your financial situation to make sure you are entitled mm. to, to have that help. I said, you know, because if you have money, you won't be allowed to go for the affordable housing scheme because you can afford to buy a property in your own right. I said, so I've got a complete paper trail. I said, and my boyfriend at the time, which is now my husband, but I said, and he will be happy to provide you with everything. We're not interested in that. We know what you are. And I'm like, I, I've nothing else to say then. I said, what, what happens? He said, you will never, ever step one foot in that post office again because you're a thief. He said, the next time we see you, we'll be in court. I said, but I've done absolutely nothing wrong. He said, in your opinion, he said, but I know people like you. I've met them before and I've met plenty of them. He do, said, we know, and do we know the name of this person? I have a feeling, I think it was Gavin somebody, um, it, his name has cropped up a couple of times before and hers and I, I have a feeling Ian Ross knows him. Right, we're interviewing the Ian Ross, you know that Nikki, yes. don't you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, so it might be worth mm. mentioning it to him if he knows the ex-CID person and why he isn't in with the CID anymore. Mm. Um, but that's a different tale. So, yes, so by then I was absolutely crying my eyes out, terrified, still locked in the room. And it went on. Um, we got there at about half past 11 in the end. And I was released at quarter five. I was but shut in that room. It, it, right. So they weren't interviewing you for that length of time. And they really didn't Mostly. have anything to show. Sorry. Mostly, Mostly they were. that time. Yeah. It, really? That length yeah. of time? Yeah, just shouting at me, just saying I'm wasting everyone's time and I'm not going anywhere until I just admit what I've done. Wow. Um, and I could save an awful lot of people's time if I wasn't sat here denying it when I know I've had the money and all these ridiculous. So did they have evidence with them about, you know, this is how we work out. This is how we can tell you you have stolen this money. You know, here is the evidence to show you. No, no. No, but there was no evidence. Oh, quite. I know the answer really, no. Nikki, but let's just make yes. that clear. Yeah, yeah, so there was nothing. What what could they show me? I couldn't ask them to show me something that I know didn't exist, you, you, you know. So I was like, well, I know I haven't taken anything. You know, I said time and time again that this computer, I said, I've never had problems before. Never. Oh, well, you, you know, they all say that. And that everything I said was just poo-pooed is oh well we've heard all that before yes yes remember we are professionals we deal with people like you many times you know and it was just all brushed off so it was sort of knocking my head against the wall really you know so, and I, I knew I was getting nowhere with them you know I thought oh my god and I, not I, once were you asked if you wanted to have a lawyer present oh no no not, I asked 
because I said I turned around halfway through and said you know do you not think that I need uh, are you suggesting that I'm going to get prosecuted I said Cause if you are then I want somebody here we haven't said anything yet you obviously know more than we do I said no I said you you said that I'm not going anywhere until I admit to something I haven't done and that I'm in serious trouble so therefore I'll be entitled to have some sort of help somewhere well no because you're the one who's saying you need that not us what's up with us asking you some questions what are you hiding and the more I was at, any time I asked for help, it, they were almost implying that it was because... Like an admission that you, if you yeah. need help, you've done something wrong, is yeah. what they were thinking. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, they were like, well, we don't know what your problem is. You've said you've done nothing, so what are you worried about? I said, well, I'm just worried about your attitudes and the way you're approaching this when I've done nothing wrong. Well, you shouldn't need legal advice, should you? Or have you done something? Yeah, you know, and it was like that solid. And, you know, they said, you do realise people go to prison for, for these sort of things. I said, I'm sure they do. I said, but I've, I haven't done anything. So, oh, here she goes, wasting our time again. You know, all this sort of... He said, we will be... He said, let's put it this way. He said, you won't be going back in the post office today or any day near to the future I said well what about my business and everything he said well we will be discussing that with Mr Breakwell um, and he will be in touch and I said right okay what 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 can you do uh, but I couldn't get out and I couldn't get home so I had to wait for them to, I said right that's it then it's and frightening all, and shocking to hear how oh, you step into this it's terrible, crazy Nikki. experience. It, oh, my God. It, it, I cannot, you know, this is 21 years on now. It's got a dreamlike quality oh listening to God. it. You it know, makes you, me furious. I, yeah. Absolutely I got, furious. I, remember, I don't remember the drive back to the post office at all, mm. although they must have drove me back. There's somebody at my job, sorry. They must have drove me back home. Mm. Uh, back to the post office to collect my car. I I can't remember leaving, getting into the car, driving home. I remember getting home. My mum rang me, frantic, because she said, oh, I've been trying to get hold of you. And they say, the post office is shut. You know, she said, where, where are you? You know, where, where have you been? And then my now husband, he was trying to get hold of me because my mum had rang him and said, oh, I can't get hold of Vicky. And yet, you know, every time I ring, she's always there. And I had a poor, you know, my dad was poor, very poorly at the time. Um, and she said, and so then he was panicking, saying, well, where is she? What, why wasn't she answering her phone? And so I, I said, oh my God, you're not going to And I was screaming down the phone. And then my mum said oh just put the phone down I'll get we'll be up there in a second and she they lived about 35 minutes away um so I said right fine and and I was just sat in home crying and mm. and just in a right old mess and then my mum turned up with my sister <laughs> and my husband then come home from work as well and I I I said oh I, well, I told him literally what I've told you. I said, I don't, I, I don't know what's happening, but, you know, I'm not allowed to go in the post office. And of course, my mum's absolutely furious. Her husband was going mad. He said, he said, we need to go see, Miss, you know, Brian, to see what the hell's going on. Um, anyway, as, as she said that, the phone rang and it was him. He said, oh, Nikki, could you come up and see me? This, you know, now I said, yeah. I said, you know, I don't know what's going on. He said, no, I don't either, to be honest. He said, but they've just left my home. Right. He said, um, and so I need to speak to you. I said, well, it's a, I, I'll bring my mum with me. I said, because, you, you know, I'm not in a good way at the moment. He said, no, that's fine. So anyway, my mum drove us up to his house. And she said, look, what's, you know, what's going on? And uh, he said, I'm going to... I've got, they've told me I've got to suspend you. And I'm like, for what? And he said, 
Nicky, I don't, I don't know what to say. He said, all I know is I've just lost my wife. And, you know, he was in his late 70s. He said, and I can't go to prison. He said, and the post office has basically said to me, it's, it's me or you. If I don't suspend you and do he as they tell... He would go to prison. They've told they, him he would go to prison if they They would prosecute him. And then he took it seriously. Yeah. Yeah. He said, he said, you know, because I, you know, my mum was, I dare you, you know, she supported you through yeah. thick and thin and she sat, and I did sit by his wife's bedside until the minute she died. And they were really good friends, you know, yeah. really good friends. And um, my mum was angry. She was like, how dare you? You know, she's been a loyal friend to you and your wife. And now you're not supporting her. He said, it's not that. I haven't got any fight in me. He said, you know, he, he said, they've given me no choice. They've basically said, if, if, Nikki, if I don't suspend Nikki and do as they tell me, do, do what they're telling me, they're going to prosecute me. He said, and I just can't cope with it. Serious, and I lack, of, felt, serious lack of balls, if I might say so. Yeah. Well, that was my mum's argument. My <laughs> mum's, yeah, yeah. My mum weren't having none of it because I felt sorry for this little old man sat there and my mum weren't having none of it. She said, well, you, you're, you're fit enough to take the salary every month, Mr Brintwell. You, you know, and yeah, she was furious. She said, no, you don't, you don't do that. You, you, you can't just throw her to the walls. That's not on. He said, Gwen, he said, I've got no choice. He said, oh, yeah, you have got a choice. Yes, you know, right. yeah. She... So, so you had your mum, heroically speaking, up, and your partner. Yes. Who, who else was there for you? Um, that, that was till then. And then um, I had a letter to, from Brian in writing to say I'd been suspended. Yeah, great. Um, down to... Uh, and I would be hearing in the future what happens um, mm. to my job, et cetera. Meanwhile, I am not allowed on the premises or um, in the shop or anything else. And of course, I was panicking, thinking, well, what happens with that? That's my shop. Mm. What do we live on? I don't, I, you know, it, it all hit me, you know, at once, really. Um, but my GP was amazing. She she was terrific. And by as soon as I got that letter, my mum then said, "You need to get a solicitor." Really, she said, "Because this this isn't right." Yeah, you know. And so that's when Simon James, I got a hold of him, um, and he said, "Come and see me." And so I went in, and, and he said, "Right." He said, "I'll ask him for everything they've got on you." Well, they didn't supply anything. You know, and and this was the problem every single because he said, I, I don't know. He said they're being very clever. He said, because they're, they're I've got nothing to prove you're innocent and I've got nothing to prove you're guilty. He said, either one. He said, because they're not supplying anything at all. He said, I don't know what I can ask for. And I said, we well, can ask for the dockets back and the weekly get a weekly report off of the horizon system. And the daily reports off of the Horizon system. Mm. And you will see that the dockets, the daily reports and the cash all balance nicely and the customers mm. are what they are. The weekly total is going berserk. And that's what's throwing the balance sheet out. I said, you know, I, I said, we do a balance. We do a balance once a week. So, so we only do a weekly report once a week. Did none of, and that, it, none of that was available? No, no, At they all. wouldn't supply. No, no. And is it right that you they go to Northern to... Ireland and then they're destroyed? That's what we were told. Oh right, right. Except Even... they magically turned up at the court hearing. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, but and, yes, they were destroyed. And you then had other interviews following yeah. that. I guess. Yes, yes, almost. Um, three monthly if you like because the first I mean I wasn't charged until over a year later mm. but it was in the newspapers the minute the post office shut so and in the papers it was headlines 
um, served postmistress mistress that has stolen um, old people's pensions. Before you even been charged? Or before... Yeah. Yeah. So do they tell the press? The post office tell the press, presumably? I think because the post office was then shut, of course, everyone was like, what's going on with the post office? What's going on? You know, and the customers especially. Right. The post office then put a sign up on the door to say we we have had to close this business. Um, and they must have got the story either from Brian or from the post office themselves right. and asked why the post office was shut. But the way they printed it in the local Stride News and Journal, which What's you it? can... If you go on their website, you'll probably be able to get that then um, pieces of um, journalism, if that's that what you want to call it. stolen other off people's pensions. Elderly, yeah. yeah, off of elderly people. Yeah, and I mean, then obviously members of my husband's family then find out. Because to be honest, I, I didn't tell anyone. Because I genuinely believed it would sort itself out. And so I thought, God, no, you, you know, I don't need at this stage to worry everybody with this and I and and it was disgusting what they were accusing me of you know and I thought I I don't want people to think of me yeah. like that um so I didn't tell a single soul and then of course it all went into the local papers and I wasn't aware of that um and then a friend rang me and said oh you've seen the the paper um and then I read it and then I, I had no chance of getting a job or anything then and then I go to like I said you go to the shop the shops and you can you can hear people yeah. it's just, you know it got to the point where I just wouldn't go outside altogether I just stayed in all the time um yeah it was it was horrific Nikki, can say. I just go back to the additional interviews that you, you had yeah. to go to? You went with a lawyer, did you, for each of those interviews? Yeah, that, well, once um, I'd spoke to Simon, yeah, and and on three occasions, I think it was, we had to go to Stride Police Station. They must have arranged a meeting room at the police station to use, and they were there with their tape recorders recording each. And I was, you know, and the story was the same. Just you know, out of interest, have... though, with a lawyer there, did they treat you and were they the same people doing the interviews? Was it? Yes. Them? Did yes. they treat you That's... the same? No. no, of course no. they didn't. No, they they weren't as abusive, no. um, and that they, they were um, more right. Let's follow the set of questions, <laughs> and let's you know, do and they it ask... more. <laughs> Reasonably. They just asked the same questions. I said the same thing, and then I was allowed to go. Um, and then we'd, oh, well, the post office want to speak to you again. Okay, then. So you turn up again, uh, you know, and you think, well, are they going to drop it now? Is that why they're turning up? You know, and it almost built your hopes, thinking, oh, God, this is, you know, at least they're talking. So, you know, hopefully they'd have sorted sorted it out or something but now they oh we're here just to ask you the same question just over a year after I then officially get charged um with I think two counts of theft and two counts of fraud or similar to, to that what sort of um, money did they put into that what sort of 24,000 they they magically found because it started off at like 35. Yeah. And so they they charged me with 24,000. Um, and I spoke to the solicitor and he, he said, right, we've got to go to Stride and put our plea into the magistrate's court. He said, but I, I think it, it will go to Crown Court. Mm. I said, right, okay. Um, so we did, a, we, I had to go to Stride and put the plea in to say not guilty and what have you then it was referred to Gloucester Crown Court and then about five months later I appeared in Gloucester Crown Court and was told that it was being moved to Bristol Crown Court so we went to Bristol Crown Court um, and it was it went on for three and a half days um, and and yeah we they first questioned but Mr Breakwell, my part-timer and two customers 
were called his post office witnesses. Right. Um, but, yeah, but through no choice of their own. And to be honest, they didn't do the post office any good whatsoever because not one of them said anything against me at all. Um, so that was pretty pointless, but hey ho. Um, yeah, and and I was in, put in the box. So who, who actually gave evidence then and what did they say? And I don't mean those four. Who actually said, and hence we can see she's stolen that money? Did anybody give evidence like that? No, no, oh. no, right. no one. No, the, the, the post office barrister was trying to imply to people, so could that be? So could this mean money had gone? Could this possibly work that that could be missing? Um, but nobody, not that I can recall, said anything close to, oh, well, yes, I suppose somebody could have stolen it. You, you know, it was never considered, to be honest, um, from any of us. Um, and, and I trusted my part-timer 100%. So uh, I never believed for a minute any money was going missing no. from no. anyone. I kn I'd known Brian, the actual owner, um, for sort of five, six years by then. Um, and the part-time, I, I, I definitely believed from the start no one had taken a single penny. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd obviously still stand by that. Um, but the customers sort of, it, but the questions were ridiculous because the barrister was like, oh, well, you're a customer. You've used this post office. Have you ever had problems in the post office before? <laughs> no. So you have now because it was, well, yeah, it was shut. You know, they're questioning pensioners. Well, what's your biggest problem this week? Well, the post office is shut. Oh, well, that's caused you a lot of pain and hardship, hasn't it? You know, and Nicola's done this to you. You know, and you think, really? You know, and they'd be like, well, no, no, the post, you know, it is a problem. The post office is shut, but she hasn't done anything, you know, you know and it, it was ridiculous. Like, you know, the more I think about what was said, and even Brian was like, well, no, she's worked for us for a, you know, for years. So she knows my accountant. She's, she has the same accountant as I do for her business, and I've helped her with her mortgage. I've seen all her bank statements. I know her boyfriend, and you know, and everything he was saying was like, so that hasn't helped you either. And by the time they questioned me, I mean, these two days I was in this box with two prison wardens, um, and and I wasn't allowed to leave, you know. It, when the judge says I can go I'm unlocked out of this little box I can see my partner across the way but they can't get anywhere near me or anything you know and it, it is a surreal feeling you know but in saying that even the prison warden was drawing little matchstick men and on post-its and passing them to me trying to make me laugh you know so he didn't believe you were guilty then well, obviously not, you know, no. and I, I, it just sort of give it a bit of a human touch. Do you know what I mean? I thought, yeah. oh, my God, what am I doing here? What, you was know, your, you just... what was your cross-examination like in court? What was Horrific. Yeah. But I, I can't, I have to say, I can't recall much of it. My husband recalls all of it. Um, and it affected him really bad because they chucked, a, they had a bundle of dockets about the size of a Rubik's cube, and he checked the barrister checked them at me, and the judge stopped sort of the cross examination in the end. Yeah, uh, because he got really aggressive and was saying, "You know exactly what you've done. Look at these," and he just checked in. I said, "I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. Can you see what this is?" I said, "Yes, it's a pension docket. Yes, and you looked at that and you took that money. I said, "I haven't taken any money." You know, he was going on and on and on and on. To the point where he threw the the dockets, and then the judge stepped in and said, "That's enough. If you've got no further questions, then we'll halt this now." So, Nikki, these dockets that they didn't have were never shown to you or your lawyer. They were thrown at you in court in a that... in a, a plastic bag. I've never heard anything like it in a zippy plastic bag in temper. 
yeah they're all banded so up you couldn't see anything disclosure as it was should have been well, well if that was your disclosure it was thrown at you in court mm. in a plastic bag. in a plastic bag Meant I mean, it, me. i'm laughing at it because it's laughable mm. And in fact, because you were found not guilty, because you were found not guilty, mm. you're not in line for any compensation for the damage nothing. they've done. No, no, nothing, no. I lost, uh, you know, obviously my business, my job, my reputation, my home eventually. Um, and your health? Health, yeah, I've, I've got obviously fibromyalgia. I've got arthritis in my knees, hips, ankles, uh, toes. I've had my bones removed in my left foot because they just disintegrated. I've been on antidepressants for 21 years now, since like a month after this happened, um, on quite a high dose actually. And I've tried to stop them and mentally. I just can't function without them. Um, and it's not helping. And every time you hear something else, something else, something else, they're getting away with it. Just mentally drives you crazy you know because it is so unjust and I think I was completely ostracized I was, you know yeah. I remember one time I was sort of coming out of Tesco's in stride and somebody spat at me and it was all in my hair and you know and and the shame mm. you know and I think well my my son he's 16 he's always known his mum is the post office woman the woman who's fighting the post office. Mm. We've never, ever had a day when post office isn't part of our lives. 